Hey guys, welcome to Through the Bible, Verse by Verse, a plain and simple study of the entire Bible, book by book, chapter by chapter, and verse by verse. We are in the book of Ruth, a lovely, uh, I'll put it this way, God's love story. The book of Ruth. We're in chapter 3, and um, in this short book, I guess it's only four chapters and it's written in such a concise way that you still get the impact. We start off with um, Elimelech, who is Naomi's husband. Because of the famine, they go to live in Moab. Um, he dies, the two sons dies. Uh, while they're there, however, the two sons marry two Moabite women. Um, in a sense, that's what happens. You know, you're living in, in, in living in around uh, living around uh, wherever you live, right? It, 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 the, the chances that you will, you know, intermingle, marry, <laughs> grows immensely. All right. So, uh, but the two sons die, and then after ten years, uh, Naomi decides she's going to go back home. The two the two daughter-in-laws. They start off with her. Naomi stops and says, Nah, y'all go back to your home. Look, there's nothing for me. I'm a dead woman. If, even if I was to have children, you're going to wait until they grow up to marry them. No, go back. One daughter-in-law, Oprah left. Opa left. And then, uh, but, but, but Ruth stayed. Uh, as they return back to Bethlehem, Ruth goes out to work in the field. The field just happened to be one of Naomi's kinsmen. And it's actually, you can say kinsman redeemer. Now, I didn't talk about that in the last um, uh, chapter, but I'll, I'll, I'll get into that this chapter because it becomes very important. Um, but Boaz is a wealthy man, but he's also a good man. He's a godly man. And we're going to see that he takes notice of Ruth because he sees a godly character in Ruth. So he, he's attracted, but, you know, how do you navigate that? And especially uh, the fact that, um, remember that uh, Ruth is a Moabite, so that was a whole nother cultural kind of barrier. But watch what happens. Chapter 3. Uh, verse 1 says, Ruth, mother, mother, uh, Ruth's mother-in-law, Naomi, said to her, My daughter, shouldn't I find security for you so that you would, you would be taken care of? Now, isn't Boaz our relative? Haven't you been working with his female servant? This evening, he will be winnowing barley in the threshing floor. Wash, put on perfume oil and wear your best clothes go down to the threshing floor but don't let the man know you're there until he has finished eating and drinking and when he lies down notice the place where he is lying go and uncover his feet and lie down then he will explain to you what you what you should do now this is one of these customs again that they had um it's not a it it it, it it's it what Ruth is telling I'm sorry what is Naomi is telling Ruth to do is to kind of let him know you're interested right so this uncovering of the feet simply meant was when he is sitting there and we'll see this in a moment that she's going to just kind of remove like the the, the, the piece of robe from his feet and lay next to his feet and that's kind of let her know. It's kind of going to say, hey, I'm interested. What, what do you want to do? Okay. Okay. This was their custom. So she says, hey, you know, doll up. Go to the hairdresser. Get a perm. This was the end of the harvest, too. So it's kind of a celebration. This is why they're doing this. Verse 5. So Ruth said to her, I will do everything you say. She went down to the dressing floor and did everything her mother-in-law had instructed her. After Boaz ate and drank and was in good spirits, he went to lie down at the end of the pile of barley. 
she went in secretly, uncovered his feet, and lay down. At midnight, Boaz was startled, turned over, and there, lying at his feet, was a woman. So he asked, Who are you? I am Ruth, your slave, she replied. Spread your cloak over me, for you are a family redeemer. Now, this phrase, family redeemer, um, meant... Now, while he was gone, there was some land that, that, some, that might have come up in dispute. And since Elimelech was dead, and, and one of the customs, and you remember, this, this goes back even before the time of Moses. Um, we saw this with uh, Tamar, the incident with Tamar. This kind of, uh, to, to keep the family, to keep the, the, the what, what the, what the, what the, what the tradition was that later became a command what it was it was to to keep your inheritance which means your name your property it it, it was to keep it in the family okay you you remember when at the end of moses life um some some daughters came to moses and said our father died he didn't have any sons he died um, so what about us? What kind of inheritance do we have? And Moses said, okay, you'll get some inheritance. And then later on, some men came and said, hey, those gals, uh, what if they get married? And so what's going to happen is that uh, if they belong to this clan and they get married, they're going to now dilute the inheritance, you know, that the Danites, if they marry somebody, if they're Danites and they marry somebody from... Uh, Zubalan, Zubalanites, then the inheritance is going to get messed up. And at that time, they said, well, okay, the daughters have to stay within their clan. If they get married, they're going to forfeit. So this is all have to do with keeping the inheritance within the family. So you would start off with, if when uh, Eliminek died, his son would have automatically got his inheritance. Now, in this case, Elimelech dies, and his two sons died. So then they say, who is the next kin? Then that next kin would redeem what is Elimelech's, Elimelech, and buy his property, and he would own all his property, and they would keep it in the family. That was the whole point of this. That was the purpose of this. Now, also, okay, there's the issue of uh, Ruth, who is now a wife, who was a wife, in order to keep now uh, the son's seed going, this redeemer would marry and then would keep the seed going as well. Now, that's going to come into play, you're going to see in the moment or, uh, later in this book here, but this is all a part of that kind of weird uh, command but that's the purpose for it was to you know keep the family inheritance as close in the family as you could uh, verse 10 then he said may the Lord bless you my daughter you have shown more kindness now than before because you have not pursued younger men whether rich or poor. Now, now right here it might be a hint that Boaz might have been a little older. Okay, just a hint here, verse eleven. Now, don't be afraid, my daughter. I will do for you whatever you say, since all the people in my town know that you are a woman of noble character. And right there, let me just say, right there is, I'm going to say everything. Right, everything. Um, I, 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 and I'm going to say, if you are seeking a spouse, a godly spouse, a godly character is what you ought to be seeking more than anything else. Notice he said, more than, there are a lot of people who have married money and have been miserable. There are a lot of people who have married not money and been miserable, but a godly character. That's what you... You know, the you that I'm going to tell you that that should be 
higher in esteem than anything else. Okay, more than looks, anything else. People got looks, and what the looks have gotten people anyway. The verse 13, no, no, verse 12. Yes, it is true that I am a family redeemer, but there is a, there is a redeemer closer than I than I am. Now, remember I told you how that this story now, that this lost, uh, as this love story is about to wrap up, he says, yes, I am a redeemer. I'm interested in you. You digging on me, I'm digging on you. However, there's somebody that has first choice, right? <laughs> Verse 13, stay here tonight and in the morning. If he wants to redeem you, that is good. Let him redeem you. You won't be happy, but you, you may or may not be happy. But if he doesn't want to redeem you, as the Lord lives, I will. Now lie down into the morning. So she lied, So she lay down at his feet into the morning, but got up while it was still dark. Then Boaz said, don't let it be known that a woman came to the dressing floor. And he told Ruth, bring a shawl you were wearing and hold it out. And when she held it out, he shoveled six measures of barley into her shawl, and she went into town. And she went to her mother-in-law, Naomi, who asked her, how did it go, my daughter? Then Ruth told her everything that the man had done for her, and she said, he gave me these six measures of barley, because he said, don't go back to your mother, empty, mother-in-law empty-handed. Naomi said, my daughter, wait, wait until you find out how things, how things go, for he won't rest unless he resolve it this day, resolve this today. So their hope and trust is in that, you know, we, Naomi certainly was saying, we want you to marry Boaz. Why? Not because he was a wealthy man, but because he was a good man. He was a godly man. I, I cannot stress that enough. He was a godly man, more than his wealth. We're going to see later on in the story when David will uh, marry uh, um, oh, what's, uh, Abigail. But Abigail's husband was a fool. He was wealthy, but he was a fool. So again, a godly woman. And yet, Abigail was a godly woman, and that's what David saw, and David married her. But we'll get to that later. Uh, chapter 4, verse 1. Boris went to the gate of the town and sat there. Now, the gate of the city was literally was the gate. You know, so you had to kind of the, the, the gate, and then the gate was sort of like the uh, town square, the municipal, municipal building. All of the elders and the men sat there, chewed the fat, but they also conducted business, okay? Boris went to the gate of the town and sat there. Soon, the family redeemer Boaz had spoken about came by. Boaz called to him and said, come over here and sit down. So he went over and sat down. Then Boaz and took ten men of the town's elders and said, sit here, and they sat down. And he said to the redeemer, Naomi, who had returned from the land of Moab, is selling the piece of land that belonged to our brother Imelech. I thought I should inform you. Buy it back in the presence of those seated here and in the presence of, of the elders of my people. If you want to redeem it, do so. But if you do not want to redeem it, tell me so that I so that I will know because there isn't any more other than you to redeem it and I am next after you. I want to redeem it, he answered. Now, right here you could think, oh, man, right? Because, again, remember, more than the land. Now, he's interested in the land. Land is land. Land has always been prosperous. But he's he's he's, he's more interested. Boaz is more interested now in not only the land. He is interested in the land. But he's also interested in Ruth. But watch the kind of shrewd way he kind of gets. Because, in other words, Ruth is sort of a package deal with the land. In other words, all that belonged to Elimelech's family, and that would be Ruth, this guy has to buy it. Package deal. You can't pass it out. He says, I'll buy the land and believe Ruth. No. Uh, verse 5. Then Boaz said, on the day that you buy the land from Naomi, you will also acquire Ruth, 
the more bias. Now I can't help but <laughs> uh, I can't help but think that he really stressed Ruth the more bias, you know, from Moab. Okay, Ruth the more bias. He says the wife of the deceased man to perpetuate the man's name on his property. The redeemer replied, "I can't redeem it myself, or I will ruin, I will ruin my own inheritance. Take my right of redemption." Because I can't redeem it. Now, you didn't have to do it. And of course, there was a weird law that if you didn't do it, the, 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 the widow could come and she would take your sand and spit in your face, kind of stuff like that. But in this case, Boaz had his ulterior motives, meaning he wanted to marry Ruth. Seven. Verse seven. Now, he's going to explain this too. At earlier periods in Israel, a man removed his sandals and gave it to the other parties in order to make any matter legally binding concerning the right of redemption or the exchange of property. This was the method of legally binding the transaction in Israel. Verse 8, so the Redeemer removed his sandal and said to Boaz, buy back the property yourself. Boaz said to the elders and all the people, your witness today that I am buying from Naomi everything that belongs to Imelec, Shilan, and Mahal, uh, uh, Malan. Malan. I will also acquire Ruth the Moabites, Malan's root, uh, widow, as my wife. I'm, I'm, it's Ma, uh, Mylan, Malan, <laughs> uh, widows, um, as my wife to perpetuate the deceased man's name on his property so that his name will not disappear among his relatives or from the gate of his home. You are all witness today. So this was all with uh, Boaz's motive, which was, again, package deal. Verse 11, the elders and all the people who were at the gate said, we are witnesses. May the Lord make the woman who is entering your house like Rachel and Leah who built the house of Israel. May you be powerful in Ephrathah Ephrath, and famous in Beth, Bethlehem. May your house become like the house of Perez, the son Tamar bore to Judah because of the offspring of the Lord, because of the offspring the Lord would give you by this young man. Now, they may at, at this point have never known that yes, not only his offspring would be not only King David, but the Savior, Jesus himself. Verse 13, Boaz took Ruth, and she became his wife. And when he was intimate with her, the Lord enabled her to conceive, and she gave birth to a son. And then the woman said to Naomi, Praise the Lord, who has not left you without a family redeemer today. May his name become well known in Israel. Boy, will it. Okay? Uh, he will renew your life and sustain you in your old age. Indeed, your daughter-in-law who loves you is better to you than seven sons and has given, has given birth to him. Naomi took the child, placed it on her lap, and took care of him. The neighbor's woman said, A son had been born to Naomi, and they named it Obed. He was the father of Jesse, the father of David. Wonderful powerful lineage here with a Moab, a Moabite. Okay. So he gives this quick genealogy. Now this is the genealogy of Perez. Perez father Hezron. Hezron fathered Ram, uh, Ram who fathered and Animadad. Animadad father Nahashan who fathered Salem who fathered Boaz, who fathered Obed, who fa who, and, and Obed fathered Jesse, who fathered David. <laughs> so, uh, why this is important? Uh, up Because the bloodline had to be preserved, had to come through David. It was extremely important that it come through, da uh, through David, through Abraham. Okay, that's why they are listing this. Uh, they do mention Perez, who was Judah's son, and then Judah uh, was Jacob's son, right? Jacob, Isaac, and then go back to Abraham. 
again, a wonderful love story. I think the greatest, one of the greatest lessons for us, walk away, is what made Ruth noticeable, what, what got the attention of a, in other words, if, now, I, I, I mentioned this last time, which became sort of, uh, many of you will know this, this phrase of what's called a high-valued man. Now, the high-value, the man who, who, who kind of perpetuated that, if he did, has since passed away. The question about it was, he would consider himself a high-valued man. Now, the terms in which he would say he was a high-value was money, the way he looked, sharp. He was a sharp dresser, right? Always manicured well and... Um, again, successful in life as you dictate it through the world. What is greater than a high value man is a godly man. Your heart will always be safe. Your love will always be safe. Doesn't mean both of you all be perfect. Um, I feel blessed that I married a Ruth. A godly woman. That was the only thing that I saw in my wife when I married her. Over 20 years ago. 25, 26 years ago. Something like that. We married. A godliness. And my heart has always been safe. Since that time. If anyone I can trust. Anyone who would never ever do me wrong. Is my wife. She's the godly woman so the character of a godly woman that's what you want all right guys short book in our next study first samuel we continue on all right see you in the next study